Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Rule 34 Podcast. I'm your host, Jack, joined by my fellow recurring guests, Mr. Solis and Pops. Ah, All right, so before we start, I need to give a shout out to the music that I'm now using. You know, as we uh, as I mentioned on the ins- on ins- on our Instagram page, as I as now I found a way to upload the podcast to YouTube. Uh, thanks to connecting the accounts, the one issue we found was that intro song was getting copy was getting a copyright strike because it's music that belongs to WWE. So I had to go on a search for a new intro, and I thought, well, why not go to the artist that I'm using for the outro to find a similar song? And before I even did that, you know, because I, I did end up using the outro still, but that one didn't get copyrighted strike. So when I saw that, I was like, I'll use the intro, but just to make sure it's fine, I went out of my way to message the artist about if it was fine to use his music and get in as long as we gave him credit. And... The artist did reply back and said that he was completely fine with us using the music for the intro and outro, as long as, you know, we give him credit, and he even told me where to give credit to. Wow. Who is this artist, Jack? Uh, Kubi. K-U-B-B-I. Oh, cool. Thanks, Kubi. I actually discovered him from um, watching other videos. I heard a song, and I'm like, man, I get, what song is this? And I found it through the comments and everything. Um, really good music. It's instrumental music, but uh-huh. it's really good music. This guy's got Jeez. great music. Yeah. So well, I just want to say congratulations, Jack and Dom. Uh, who else is part of your operation, Jack? Well, I would say uh, I, Oscar and Lisandro are definitely a part of it. But you For know, sure. as of right now, because of their busy schedules, they're, they they. Uh, I think they would agree they're more of recurring guests for whenever they they are free. Okay. But, you know, hopefully in the future. Oscar Lissandro, one, I miss you. Two, I'm proud of you. And congratulations for having made a milestone in the podcast industry that we never saw in school, which was get copyright struck. (laughs) It's like a badge of honor. (laughs) Yeah, you know, so uh, for the listeners who don't know, uh, Mr. Solis and I, uh, did the podcast for, for well for me it was four the four years or three years that he was there when I was in high school and then I did it the one year with uh, two other teachers you know but the the common theme you know with that between Dom Oscar Lisandro Mr Solis and Leobardo and I was that whenever we chose an intro song and I remember Lisandro asked this on the first day he was there because he asked for I think a Metallica song and uh-huh. he asked are we gonna get copyrighted and Mr. Solis's words were if we ever get copyrighted that's how you know we made it <laughs> and you know that this thing is reaching further than it ever has because it struck a chord with somebody's attorney <laughs> <laughs> hey so I'm wondering you know how YouTube sends out those uh plaques whenever subscribers hit like yeah, yeah, a certain yeah. number uh, when they hit a certain number of subscribers do you get one when you get a strike <laughs> well I imagine Jack got either like a comment or an email I see you print that sucker out <laughs> frame it uh, we're not here to talk about YouTube uh, Jack uh, and we're all about done talking about Kubi what are we here to talk about we are here to talk about the recent WWE pay-per-view that happened just yesterday, Sunday, Hell in a Cell. Right. And let me just say this. Compared to how it lived up, the interest going into it was low. Cause, you think so? Well, at least for me, just because in my mind, there was only three matches built up. And granted, those That's three right. matches were built up to a great degree that yeah, you can my, have interest my, in my them. My reaction to your... My reaction to your low interest was only built around even two of those three matches that they announced. Yeah. Because I thought, I mean, we walked in go thinking we've wanted Sasha versus Bailey for a long time and we're finally going to get it. And then I thought the Ray, I mean, the uh, Roman Reigns versus Jay Uso match, you know, it's got a pretty compelling story going into it. Yeah. We'll go into how effective those stories were played out. But I had, I mean, it's funny. I had those two. Really? <laughs> Nothing else? <laughs> Which I think just is a testament to the bar that I've lowered for this company. <laughs> just get this one right, won't you? 
I mean, and it's a testament to the build because really, if you look at the build that they've had, you know, since the last pay-per-view, you would think these three matches were the only matches that were going to be on the card. Just three consecutive cell matches. They just open the door, let another pair of people in. <laughs> Re- replenish all the props. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scrub down a few places. Scrub, scrub. Hmm. Um, wouldn't it have been great if it was just a three-on-three mixed tag in the cell? <laughs> Two, three champions on one side, three challengers on the other. And, you know... Randy Orton and Sasha Banks tagging each other in. Tell me if you agree. I told my dad before this started, I feel like three ma- three Hell in a Cell matches on one night is oversaturation. Uh, yes, and we'll get into it. I'm pretty convinced that two of these matches didn't need the Cell at all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you when you hear about the feud and you hear about where it went, you know, you would think, you know, like we mentioned, uh, I forgot, I think it was on the last one how we were saying, you know, the cell should only be reserved for those blow-off feuds, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. But, like, you know, sure, they seem like that, but then you get to the actual matches, as, as we'll talk about, and it's like, it doesn't really, you, you watch the match and you're just like, this doesn't really need to be inside the cell. Yeah. Yeah. But... Uh, was but did the show deliver? That's the question today. Hmm. Which I'll save it for the end, whether I think it delivered or not. But yeah, so, let's go. So we'll start off with the first match, and this surprised my dad and I: Roman versus Jay mm-hmm. for the Universal Championship. Honestly, I thought this might have either been in the semi-main spot or the main spot. Yeah, except when you think about that, you are setting up two consecutive cell matches, which is not ideal. So I think the goal was definitely to space the three apart as far as you can. Have one in the beginning, one in the middle, one at the end. But we're solving a problem that should never have happened. Why are we trying to build a show with three Hell in a Cell matches? Yeah, you know, and especially because I told my dad, like, as I watched the three matches... I noticed a difference, you know, and I, I I even called it, you know, watching the 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 J Roman match. Even though it, yeah. here was the unique thing about it, it was a Hell in a Cell, but you know, normally in Hell in a Cell, you either win by pinfall or submission, right? Or for some reason, the ref stoppage. Uh, nope, Fiend versus year. Rollins. Don't you dare, WWE. But so, what made this one different was that they made it an I Quit match inside the cell. You know? Right. So and, to set it up for our listening audience, we're talking about the defending Universal Champion Roman Reigns fighting his cousin Jay Uso for the Universal Championship. Oh, but also it's inside of Hell in a Cell. Oh, but also it's an I Quit match. Yeah. Leaping lizards. Yeah, and you know, as we get into it, you know. As I mentioned, you know, looking at the three somewhat spoilers, you know, I saw Reigns versus Jay, and you know, even though it was an I Quit match, they barely used any weapons. And so when right. I was looking at it, I was like, and you know, they were barely utilizing the cell for the most part. So right. when I was watching it, I told I told my dad, you know, the way I look at it, they're not using weapons here because probably one of the other ma- other Hell in a Cell matches is probably going to be centered around uh, the usage of a lot of weapons. Yeah. And then I said, and if that if one of them is going to be centered around weapons, and Ray Roman and Jay aren't going outside the cell, then that means uh-huh. the third one is going to have that spot where they go outside the cell, maybe battle oh, on climbing. the top. Yeah. I, um, you know, when we got to Bailey and Sasha, and they start using weapons, we'll get more into that. In my mind, I thought, why isn't this the main event? Oh, because they're going to do that top of the cell stuff with the other two. Yeah. I got so mad. But we're on Reigns and Jay. That, it didn't need a lot. They used as much as they needed because what did we need? We needed both men to pummel each other to the point where the other says, I quit. Which is frustrating because who quits from being punched in the face or, you know, scared yeah. in the gut? I, this was a match that sort of needed fin- like submissions, you know? Yeah. Even a wrench on somebody. This, this match was kind of like a why, you know? Kind of like, yeah. why yeah. is this even a match? You know, it's like, I, I understand, okay, you're having a family hierarchy feud, you know? Uh, but why is this, 
you know, in the cell and why, why you in the cage, you know, yeah. it's like, if you literally with an eraser, like on the bottom of a pencil, erase the cell, it's a, it's a fine match. It's not impacted at all by the disappearance of the cage around them. Yeah. And I thought it told a compelling story. Because you know what? To Reigns' credit, there were times where I thought Jay looked pretty good. I thought, are they crazy? How crazy are they? How crazy is this company? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, they didn't really use a lot of weapons, you know. Which, I mean, again, you don't want to use overuse the weapons because again that's over saturation not only on top of three hell in a cell matches but on the extreme stipulations Mm -hmm. but you know i did think they did unique weapons you know because like Mm -hmm. normally in cell matches you're probably going to see kendo sticks chairs maybe tables you know sometimes they introduce new things but you know i thought it was interesting that they brought out the leather strap which they started whipping each other with yeah um Roman was using the steel steps uh, from time to time, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. But like, and you know, uh, to to push on uh, Pop's thinking, you know why this match had to be I quit? That last match was basically I quit because that match that they had at Classic Champions, which was a straight pinfall match, Reigns insisted on hearing Jay utter the words "You are the head of the table," whatever he wanted him to say. So that was a rather <laughs> nice transition. So this match where the, the match ends when you admit verbally defeat, which is really cool, you know? Yeah. Would Ray, was Reigns ever going to do that? No. Was Jay yeah. ever going to win? No. That was maybe my only problem with this match. It was yeah. like, we are only delaying the inevitable. This has been just the longest half hour I've experienced in a while. Yeah. And, you know, the one thing I've liked with uh, Roman's heel, like, uh, heel turn and like as he's progressed you know since he turned heel yeah. is that uh you know obviously we know he's gonna win but they're they're not like uh they're not uh making it i guess you could say predictable in the sense that you know uh like he's showing like he's unstoppable you know like nothing's phasing him you know like uh-huh. he he's, he's really sh- yeah you know like you like those those whips getting whipped with the leather strap you know was obviously hurting him jay yeah. even made him pass out like two times because he was choking him with the strap you right know? so like you're able to get those compelling moments despite mm-hmm. knowing the fact you know that well roman's not never gonna quit you know yeah but you know they still give jay that shine that you know he may not have made roman quit but he was able to make him pass out twice you know yeah which in a normal match would have been the end very true the ref would have stopped the ref couldn't stop this match and there was at least two or three times I really wanted him to. <laughs> like, there was a point where I think he, that poor guy, Jay, do you quit, Jay? I got to hear you say, I quit. And I think, well, this really bit Roman in the back in the end because he killed Jay. <laughs> <laughs> He's never going to be able to win. <laughs> Unless he makes him a meat puppet, sticks his arm with that weird gold gauntlet thing on his wrist up his back and go I quit <laughs> uh, yeah that was, that's what I was telling uh, that's what I was telling Jack I'm like are we gonna get one of those mankind I quits you know <laughs> yes yes you know? Paul Heyman looked like he was positioning himself right next yeah. to the announce table I'm like I'm like who's near the PA system that's gonna start uh-huh. screaming I quit uh-huh. I, I quit I was looking for shenanigans as well <laughs> yeah, but you know it was funny, you know, because, you know, despite the rumors, you know, that, like, this is what's going to be built up for WrestleMania, that that final moment where, like, all the authority figures, you know, Adam Pierce and all the backstage people come in Jamie to try Noble and... authority. <laughs> they come in, you know, trying to save Jay, trying to save the refs since Roman yep, was, like, beating yep. up on the refs and stuff. And, you know, my my dad and I were, exp- were somewhat expecting, you know, out of nowhere to hear, like, The Rock's music or, like, some mm-hmm. some family member's music that was going to come out, you know? Yeah. I mean, and a family member did come out. Jimmy comes out once again. And, yes, you he know, does. He, he's, he again does.